Hey there, come on in. Check out my fully electrified home. Yeah, so we fully electrified our house and the reason we decided to do that is we wanted to actually do something about uh, combating climate change. We have two young kids and we care about their futures. We've actually learned that one of the most important things that anybody who is a homeowner can do is to remove the emissions from their own home. A lot of people don't realize that the gas appliances that they use to cook their food, to heat their water, to warm their home are causing pollution. Unlike all the sort of things you hear about for fighting climate change, you should stop eating meat, you should stop flying, you should completely upend your lifestyle and stop doing all these things that cause pollution. Those things do help, but the things that actually have the biggest impact are these sort of things that are passive, right? It's a decision you make once every 10, or maybe 15 years. And if you're prepared to make that decision at that moment and make the right one, you can do way more than you can with making all these other lifestyle changes combined. All right, well, let me show you our first uh, appliance here, which is an all electric induction stove. This is uh, powered by electricity, uh, but it uses magnets to cook your food. Uh, it doesn't actually heat up the air around the pans or the pots. It actually heats up the pots themselves uh, and is super efficient. Uh, it can boil a pot of water almost twice as fast as a gas stove. It doesn't have any of the fumes uh, or any of the other dangerous things that get in the air from, from gas stoves. One thing to note about induction uh, stoves is that uh, not every pot or pan will work on it. It needs to be able to be magnetic. So you can do what they call the magnet test. And if you, you could have a little magnet and you touch it to the pot and it sticks, uh, then you know that that pot's good to go. So it works really well on cast iron uh, and it works well on just about every pot we had. We had to replace a few uh, of ours, um, but overall uh, you know, we didn't have to do too much. Oh, and I think I hear it starting to boil. All right, let's check out the utility room. So this is our heat pump heater. This is uh, all electric. It's a Mitsubishi electric uh, heat pump and it heats the entire uh, first and second floor and it also does cooling. So that's one thing about heat pumps. You may already have one in your house if you have an air conditioner. A heat pump is the same thing except it works in both directions. It can both make it cool and it can also make it hot in your place. So this replaced our gas furnace that we had. It was about 15 years old. It went in this exact same spot and this uh, heat pump uh, draws from uh, the air outside and moves uh, warm air from the outside into uh, into the ha uh, into the house in the winter, and it also uh, moves warm air from the house back outside uh, to keep it cool uh, during the during the summer months. This is actually some electric heating. This element only turns on in the coldest months of the year. It only kicks on when it's 20 degrees or below. It's used for giving us that a little bit of extra heat that we need to stay uh, warm in the winter. The filter for this thing is way better than our old filter. If you look in here, it's four inches thick. And so when we had those uh, forest fires from Canada coming down, this uh, really helps filter out all that bad smoke where our old system really wouldn't have done uh, that much at all. So it's an added bonus for comfort as well for us. So there's a lot of incentives that are available to reduce the cost of uh, all of these things. Uh, there's a lot of money that you can get back as either a tax credit or a tax uh, rebate uh, from the federal government. Uh, we were also able to get some money uh, from the state up front uh, uh, for the solar panels. They have, they essentially pay you for the promise of producing a certain amount of renewable energy from your solar panels. So we were able to get about like $8,000 from the state. And then there's also a bunch of little rebates that the different uh, utilities will uh, provide for doing insulation upgrades and things like that. And actually even local, uh, the Village of Oak Park has a number of sustainable grants. They have efficiency home grants for folks that are available. So this is our heat pump water heater. It's all electric and it uses the same technology to heat our home, but it, instead of heating the air, it heats our water. Uh, so at the top up here is the actual heat pump unit and the tank is below. Uh, our old hot water heater was gas. It was a 40 gallon tank. This one's a 50 gallon tank. And the way that it works is it actually draws in warm air from this room that we're in, and it uses that air to, to heat uh, the water. This is a fan that essentially blows cold air, uh, and it actually makes this room a couple degrees colder than the rest of the house. Uh, but what it's doing is it's 
just again taking uh, warm air, warm energy from the air in here and it uses that to then uh, very efficiently heat the water in here. So just like any other uh, tank, you can set the temperature. This happens to be a digital one. It has a lot of features. Honestly, I haven't used all of them yet, but it has a vacation setting. Uh, you can set the temperature up very high or very low. Uh, and we found that since we swapped it out, we've had plenty of hot water. Another thing that's really great uh, about the, replacing both of these systems is uh, a gas uh, system will have to vent outside. So you can see over here, there's the two holes that we used to have venting both from the gas furnace and also from the hot water heater to the outside uh, because it's making all this extra pollution from the gas and it has to vent that outside. We don't have that anymore and so those are holes in our house that we could just seal up uh, and we're not venting out pollution. This is the laundry room so uh, not a lot of people realize it. In fact we didn't. We had a gas dryer uh, and it's pretty common uh, in Oak Park in Chicago to have uh, a gas line uh, that heats up uh, the, uh, the element in the in the dryer and that's how you uh, dry your clothes. We replaced that with a fully electric dryer. Um, they've been around for forever. Um, this is a pretty standard electric dryer. Uh, the one thing we did have to do is install this outlet. This is a 240 volt plug. Uh, and so we did have to run this electrical um, from our breaker panel to have this outlet. The plug is actually a little bit different looking than a typical uh, plug. It's a much beefier plug uh, than the regular um, 120 volt plug. So this is uh, our breaker panel uh, that we had to also replace before we added all these appliances. Um, one thing that our house had, and it's pretty typical for a lot of older homes like ours that are over 100 years old, you'll probably have a 100 amp panel and that's just not enough space for all the new electricity they're gonna be needing to use. So when we uh, installed our solar panels, we actually had them install an upgraded 200 amp panel uh, along with it. Uh, and the reason we did that is you actually get a tax credit if you bundle the solar panels and the uh, panel installation all as one project. I'd say the biggest thing to prepare for is to make sure you, you actually do have enough space in your electric panel to add all those new appliances. When your hot water heater breaks, you're likely going to want to replace it very quickly. and. You don't want to wait for an electrician, you know, for a couple of weeks to come and run the, the wiring to hook up your new electric hot water heater. And so it's best to prepare ahead of time to upgrade that panel early, run the electrical early. And so when it is time to replace it, then you can just do it right then and not be forced to buy yet another gas hot water heater or gas furnace when those things break down. The next thing I'll show you is our uh, second heat pump. So when we replaced our furnace, we actually needed two heat pumps to meet the heating needs and cooling needs for our home. And we decided to use that as an opportunity to have two zones in our house. So this is a small heat pump, otherwise known as a mini split that just heats this basement space that I'm mostly just used for when our kids want to play. Uh, so it has a remote that comes with it. You can turn it on. Uh, you can set it to cold mode. You can set it to warm mode. Uh, and it's also, and again, just like a regular heat pump, it's very efficient. Uh, and it has all sorts of other f features in addition to that where you can sort of set where the air is blowing and how hot it's going to be. And you can have it you know, turn up or turn down uh, and set all these things. So outside, we have our solar panels. Uh, this equipment here is what controls them. This is the inverter, uh, and then this is an electric cutoff switch, and also this is our uh, electric meter. Actually, we uh, had them replace this when we had the new uh, solar panels put in. Uh, it's a smart meter, so they had to do that uh, service. And you can see all this is connected up to this conduit, which goes all the way up to our upper roof, which is where our 24 solar panels are. And over here we have uh, the other part to our heat pump system. These are the outside condensers that draw in the warm air from outside or push out the warm air from inside. Uh, so this is, each one is connected to each of the two heat pumps we have. This is for the smaller white one that we were looking at uh, in the basement and then the larger one is for the heat pump that heats and cools the rest of the house. These two units replace the, the AC uh, condenser that we had out here from our old system. It fills almost the same space, although it goes a little further back, uh, and they're much quieter than our old system. And this is our garage where we charge our electric vehicle. Uh, this is the car we got here a couple months ago, and this is the charging port that we use for it. Uh, just uh, 
costs a couple hundred dollars. You can just buy it online. Um, this is the charging port, uh, and this is where it goes in the car. You can just open that up if you unlock it. Oh, there we go. And then plug it right in. Um, so overall, the whole thing cost about $47,000, which is a lot. You don't have to do all of the steps that we did, and also you don't have to do them all at once. You really shouldn't, if, especially if you just replaced your, uh, your furnace, don't replace it with an electric one, right? If you just bought a new stove, don't replace it. The idea is to replace it when those things are about to be, you know, needing to be replaced anyways, and do it then. So you can kind of space it out, whatever makes the most sense for you, but just know that there are these incentives.